Welcome to Declassifying the Paranormal. Here we reveal the secrets that sinister organizations attempt to conceal from the world, objects and entities that could shake the very foundations of what we think is, and is not, possible. Today we have secured documents belonging to the SCP Foundation, and will reveal to you the nature of SCP-6038. Notice from the Records and Information Security Administration RACER, Records and Information Security Administration The original version of this file was initially elaborated by Agent Ramirez. The file has been revised and updated by the Paratech Division of Site-63. Access to the original file is unrestricted under Level 1 Security Clearance. Access to the updated version is only for staff with Level 3 Security Clearance. First Iteration, Level 1 Item Number, SCP-6038 Containment Class, Pending Special Containment Procedures Pending Description SCP-6038 refers to an ongoing phenomenon affecting rural villages in the southern region of, redacted, Central America. No eyewitness accounts of the events are available, since every case has involved the complete termination of the local inhabitants. Preliminary forensic evaluation of human remains after an SCP-6038 incident indicates extreme violence consistent with the use of both premodern bladed and edged weapons, as well as blunt trauma. Severity of the damage to both human remains and property suggests the physical strength of the perpetrators vastly exceeds that of the average human. Three SCP-6038 incidents have been documented so far. They occurred sequentially in a lapse of five days, between 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. Forensic reconstruction suggests attackers emerged from the ground and started rounding the population. Footprints recovered from the scene indicate the attackers are likely humanoid and weigh around 200 kilograms. Height estimates are about 2 meters tall. Each set of footprints originates from a different crater in the ground within a 50-meter radius from the town. There are no signs of tunnels or another type of digging, suggesting the entities manifested in those locations. The initial location of the humanoid entities is consistent with a tactical positioning intended to cut the escape routes for the inhabitants of the affected towns. In one incident, Villagers had access to firearms and used them to defend themselves. Evidence suggests it was ineffective in stopping the attack. After the termination of all inhabitants in the town, there is no evidence of further activity on the part of SCP-6038. It is unclear how SCP-6038 left the incidents area. At the time the aftermath of SCP-6038 was discovered, there was no trace of it aside from footprints and very small traces of fine dust from an ivory-like substance. Discovery Log A bus driver arrived at the locality of San Jacinto, redacted. The individual presented signs of acute psychological disturbance and attempted to contact local authorities claiming that a matanza had occurred in a nearby village. Local police dismissed the man as disturbed and argued that incidents in guerrilla territory felt outside of their jurisdiction. However, they still elaborated a report on the bus driver's declaration. A few days later, the report caught the attention of Agent Ramirez, a local SCP Foundation operative, and liaison with local authorities. The peculiarities of the reported events prompted Agent Ramirez to travel to the location, where he confirmed the bus driver's testimony. Agent Ramirez's evaluation of the site pointed to anomalous involvement in the incident. In the following days, Agent Ramirez discovered two other settlements affected by SCP-6038. The three affected towns were suspected by local authorities to be support bases for the insurgent group known as Las Viberas. Nearby towns not affiliated with that group have not been affected. Based on this hypothesis, 
Agent Ramirez identified the most probable site for SCP-6038's manifestation and requested MTF intervention. Addendum, Transmission Log Identified, Agent Ramirez Identified, Dr. Guevara Note, some information has been censored per Agent Ramirez's request citing privacy concerns. Forward, after the discovery of SCP-6038, Agent Ramirez began urgent communication with Dr. Guevara, their immediate superior. Begin log. All you have presented so far is circumstantial evidence. Unfortunately, we still lack sufficient information to confirm the presence of anomalous activity on your site. I'm afraid I cannot approve the deployment of an MTF at this moment. The last time I called you it was one town. Now there are two more. All dead because we don't have enough information. Do you know what I think? I think that in the States we send hammer down every time someone gives us a dirty look. And here I have almost 100 corpses and can't get even a single squad. Careful with your words, kid. Remember your career is on the line. How do you think it will look if I deploy an MTF at your request and it ends up being nothing? No worse than if you don't and it ends up being something. Look, doctor, if you are right and I'm wrong you can laugh at me and relocate my ass to Svalbard. I will take full responsibility for the fiasco. But if I'm right and you are wrong, I will make sure you take full responsibility for every single one of the dead. Am I being clear enough? End log. Closing statement. At Agent Ramirez's request, MTF Tau-52 Rumble in the Jungle, specialized in containment and engagement in tropical environments, has been urgently dispatched to the area. Next iteration, Level 3. Item number, SCP-6038. Containment Class, Safe. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-6038-1 is to be kept disassembled in its core modular components and its main body. Each module of SCP-6038-1 should be kept separately in a standard safe class container under the supervision of the Paratechnological Division of Site-63. In order to prevent the emergence of SCP-6038-2 instances, under no circumstances should the components SCP-6038-1 be assembled and activated. A possible exception to these containment procedures is currently being considered under Research Proposal 697. Description SCP-6038-1 is a paratechnological construct capable of autonomous behavior. Its main body resembles a wheelbarrow bomb disposal robot, including a mechanical claw and drilling tool that allows it to manipulate objects and drill small holes in the ground. Reverse engineering of SCP-6038-1 has identified five core functionality modules in its hardware. Modular consists of an embedded processor running a non-sentient tactical AI. This module controls the behavior and decisions of SCP-6038-1. It has shown a highly adaptable response to encountering new threats. Module B consists of an ultrasonic echolocation sensor. This sensor is powerful enough to give SCP-6038-1 an awareness of its surroundings in a radius of 3 kilometers with a granularity of 2 millimeters. Module C consists of a 3D printing cloning device. This module is responsible for creating instances of SCP-6038-2. It also contains a morphogenetic field generator, CSCP-4211 and SCP-3241, which allows it to temporarily alter the thaumaturgical properties of SCP-6038-2 instances. Module D is a hyper-high-frequency voice synthesizer. SCP-6038-1 uses it to render ultrasonic voice incantations in Mycenaean Greek, inaudible to humans but tuned to the hearing range of SCP-6038-2. 
These incantations allow SCP-6038-1 to exert control over all instances of SCP-6038-2 in a radius of 2.5 km. Module E is a thaumaturgically enhanced solar power generator and battery. It integrates thaumaturgical sigils associated with the Turkic sun god, Koyash, to the photovoltaic system, augmenting its energy efficiency a 593% from the expected norm. SCP-6038-2 instances are cloned maxillary teeth belonging to a Dracus caucus, a now extinct species of Georgian dragon. SCP-6038-2 anomalous properties manifest when planted into firm ground. After implantation, SCP-6038-2 instances can grow into 2 meters tall, faceless humanoids made of an ivory-like substance and resembling archaic period Greek statues. In this form, an SCP-6038-2 instance can grow weapons made of the same material as its body. SCP-6038-1 creates new instances of SCP-6038-2 utilizing the cloning device on Module C. SCP-6038-1 can activate the growth of SCP-6038-2 into its humanoid form performing an incantation from Module D. SCP-6038-1 does not appear capable of maintaining control of more than 50 active instances of SCP-6038-2 at the same time. During combat, SCP-6038-1 will hide itself and control the operation of SCP-6038-2 from a safe distance. Initially, the weapons manifested by SCP-6038-2 are consistent with those of an ancient Greek phalanx. However, SCP-6038-1 is capable of temporarily altering the weaponry manifested by SCP-6038-2 employing morphogenetic thaumaturgy. SCP-6038-2 instances can remain active an average time of 5 hours before dissolving into a fine ivory-like dust. Recovery Log SCP-6038-2 was first discovered by Agent Ramirez, Foundation Operative and Liaison in, Redacted, Central America. SCP-6038-2 attacks have been targeting rural towns associated with a local guerrilla group known as Las Vibras. Agent Ramirez figured this connection and the location of the town most likely to be targeted next. MTF Tau-52 was deployed to the zone finding the town overrun by SCP-6038-2 instances and all of its inhabitants already deceased. MTF Tau-52 proceeded to engage with SCP-6038-2, which showed resistance to small arms fire. MTF Tau-52 switched to anti-tank weaponry which proved effective against SCP-6038-2. However, more instances of SCP-6038-2 kept emerging from the nearby jungle to engage MTF Tau-52. Furthermore, newer SCP-6038-2 instances began manifesting modern weapons instead of ancient ones. MTF Tau-52 was taken by surprise by this development, which led them to start suffering casualties. This prompted the MTF leader to request aerial support to carpet bomb the area in order to control SCP-6038-2. The aerial bombing was successful in stopping the ongoing assault of SCP-6038-2. Further inspection of the zone recovered a disabled SCP-6038-1. SCP-6038-1 had been hiding in the nearby vegetation producing more instances of SCP-6038-2. The airstrike damaged it to a point of partial neutralization, but left its hardware intact enough for successful repair and research by the Paratech division. It is believed that SCP-6038-1 managed to avoid total destruction from the aerial bombing by commanding various instances of SCP-6038-2 to shield it. SCP-6038-1 was secured and taken to Site-63. This incident demonstrates the remarkable ability of SCP-6038-1 to rapidly adapt to new threats. 
The Paratech division believes that had it not been disabled by the first bombing, it would have adapted SCP-6038-2 to manifest anti-air weapons. Since SCP-6038 incidents involved the termination of every witness, there was no necessity of amnestic application to the local population. The mass execution of the four towns was attributed to local guerrillas, and the SCP-6038 recovery mission was disguised as an anti-terrorist operation. Update regarding GOI-1043 Cryptological analysis of SCP-6038-1 firmware has confirmed suspicions that SCP-6038 was developed by the Volran Corporation, furtherly identified as GOI-1043. This confirms the report by Agent Ramirez that governmental authorities of Redacted hired the services of GOI-1043 as part of its counterinsurgency campaign against the armed group known as Las Vibras. Foundation operatives have already begun procedures to pressure the government of Redacted to stop employing anomalous weapons in its military campaign. GOI-1043 is a private military company specializing in anomalous warfare. They are mainly involved in asymmetric warfare conflicts in developing countries. GOI-1043 is suspected to be active in Latin America, Africa, the Middle East, Eastern Europe, and South Asia. The Foundation's official policy towards anomalous private military companies, APMCs, is currently being discussed by the O5 Council, the Ethics Committee, and the Geopolitics Department. The Ethics Committee is also evaluating Research Proposal 697. Addendum, email communication regarding research proposal 697. From, Dr. Guevara. To, Dr. A. W. Bird. Regarding our last update on 697, the Paratechnological Division of Site 63 has suggested utilizing the capabilities SCP-6038-1 to modify and control the weaponry and behavior of SCP-6038-2 to assist in MTF training. A reprogrammed SCP-6038-1 could generate SCP-6038-2 instances armed with non-lethal weapons to participate in MTF training drills. I want to make clear that I wholeheartedly support the idea. However, reverse engineering the technology, especially from Module C, is proving to be more challenging than previously thought. We could really accelerate this project if we had the cooperation of GOI-1043. Direct confrontation with them will prove too costly, so O5 will certainly initiate negotiations. Let's make sure technology exchange is brought to the table. Addendum, Fragment of Interview Log with Agent Ramirez Interviewed, Agent Ramirez Interviewer, Dr. Guevara Forward, after the events leading to the containment of SCP-6038, Agent Ramirez solicited a transfer to Svalbard. Begin Log my point is that the Foundation cannot afford to move you. You are our most valuable specialist in the region. It would take ages to replace you. On the other hand, your performance during the SCP-6038 incident deserves a promotion, not a transfer to a godforsaken site in Svalbard. You know? This is not the first time it happens. What do you mean? The Mantanzas? The indiscriminate slaughter of civilians. They have been doing that for years. They don't even have to be sure they are involved. Just a simple suspicion is enough to sentence a whole town. This time we intervened because they decided to get creative with the methods and hired those ravens and that fucking robot. The same robot that we want MTFs to play with. But before this, I had seen so many massacres carried out with just guns and knives and I could do nothing about it. I thought this time would be different. That I could make a difference. But I could not save anyone. Not even a single person. And if I go back, I will have to keep watching it happening over and over again. I won't be able to even try to stop it, because there would be no anomaly involved. War is not an anomaly. Just let me move on. 
I can't keep like this anymore. End log. Closing statement. Agent Ramirez's transfer request to Svalbard has been approved. Thank you for tuning in. We hope that you enjoyed this broadcast. If you did please subscribe, like and share it around. If you have any particular case files you'd like us to cover in future broadcasts leave a comment below and we'll get around to it shortly. Tune in again tomorrow for more revelations.